Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted or tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That's Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16 out of the New King James Version. Well, again, we praise God for all of you being here with us today on this beautiful, thriving Thursday. My name is Enrique Brooks. I'm honored to be the senior pastor of Thrive Church and host of the Prayer 365 podcast. So we're on a mission to transform lives through the lifestyle of prayer. And I tell you, um, if you're new to our community, uh, first thing first, we welcome you. We're so excited to have you. Um, but I want to let you know what we do. We pray Monday through Friday at 6.30 a.m. We start our day with a brief devotion and prayer. On Saturday and Sunday, we also gather for prayer, um, perhaps other ways, but we still come together and pray. And we pray every day. That's why it's called Prayer 365. In fact, um, we are now in our fifth year. We're working on our fifth year of praying together daily. And we've discovered this truth that prayer changes things. You say, well, Brother Brooks, I could have told you that when it didn't take you um four or five years to figure that one out. Um, grandma told me that. Well, listen, we must got the same grandma. She on the conference line right now because she told me that prayer changes things. But here's what I didn't know, that prayer would actually transform my life. And it's been doing so every single day. And I tell you that I am better because of prayer. My life is better because of prayer. My marriage is better because of prayer. My finances are better because of prayer. I could go down the list. Uh, prayer has absolutely transformed my life. And I encourage you, if you've been looking for transformation, we invite you to join us in the lifestyle of prayer. So hit that subscribe button um, and make sure that you join us. Or you can join us live or certainly through the replay. Before we get into our devotional this morning, I just want to invite you to join us this coming Sunday for our Sunday worship experience. Our service starts at 1030 a.m. You've been looking for a church home. Maybe your look is over. Your search is over. We would love for you to have and join us. Uh, we would love to have you join us this coming Sunday. Uh, the information for our for our ministry can be found on our website at thrive.church. That's thrive with a Y dot church because God didn't make you to get by. He didn't make you to barely make it or to struggle or just survive, but he created you to thrive. All right. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get uh, get on into our devotional this morning. Um, this week, we are we began a series of devotions titled The Grace to Grieve, The Grace to Grieve. I want you to know that there's grace for you in every challenge that you go through. And that grace is found in Jesus Christ. Grace is power for the powerless. It's strength for the one who lacks it. And I want you to know that you can go boldly to the throne of grace and find that mercy and get that grace when you need it the most. One of the seasons that we certainly need that grace that we need that power, that we need that mercy, is in a season of grieving. This week, we've been focusing on that grace that's found in Jesus Christ. I want to take you through our, take you to rather our main text, our key text, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 through 16. It says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are or tested as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain, obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Yesterday, um, one of the things that I that I wanted to um, that actually kind of came up 
was the fact that Christ can relate to everything that you've gone through. But most importantly, he can give you strength to go through it. Yes, every challenge, every season, everything that you've experienced, Christ knows exactly what you are going through. And he can give you strength. He can give you grace in order to navigate through that very thing. How many of you want that grace? How many of you desire that grace? I'm sure, I'm sure you do. If at any point you find something in this devotional that's helpful to you, please let us know in the comment section. Um, I've, I've been seeing um, perhaps um, a tick, um, a upscale or an uptick rather in the number of people that have been joining us. Um, I hope that this is helpful to you. Um, certainly hit the like button, but your feedback would be very helpful to let us know how this is helping you. This morning, we're going to continue a step further into our devotional, and we've been looking over the last several days at the ways that Jesus grieved, the ways that Jesus grieved, and we've been looking at his life as a model for how we can process grief. And so here are the four ways that Jesus, Jesus processed grief. Number one, he prayed. Number two, he cried. Number three, he led. And number four, he surrendered. This morning, and tomorrow, we're going to go to the cross where we're going to see these last two. But today, I want to focus on the fact that Jesus led. In fact, as you may see in the comment section, we're going to talk about uh, leading while grieving. Leading while grieving. I want to take you to the cross, to the scene of the cross, and we find Jesus nailed to the cross we find him naked. We find him being humiliated in front of this crowd of people, soldiers that are uh, that are taunting him, people that are saying all type of crazy things to him. Uh, he's nailed to the cross. He has nails in his hands. He has a nail, a nail in his feet. He has a crown of 72 thorns on his head. His body has been lacerated. Um, there's blood leaking from his body. He's tired. He's thirsty. We see the humanity of Christ in a way that uh, that we would have never desired. There was no beauty in, in, in that we sh that we could even behold inside of him. It was a horrible sight. But yet there are four people that are standing at the cross. There's the mother of Jesus. There's her sister, as well as Mary Magdalene. And John, the beloved John, one of his disciples, one of his apostles. And I want to take you to this and I want to show you what's happening. Um, let's go to the scripture. I've kind of said it already, but I want to read it to you. It says, now stood there by the cross of Jesus. Uh, you found his mother and his mother's sister, who's Mary, the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. Now, Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, that's John, the beloved John, and he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. Now, uh, in looking at this, you would ask, well, Pastor Brooks, what does this have to do with grief? Um, what does this have to do with Jesus grieving or even leading while grieving? Well, I have to, I have, I showed you this in order to kind of set the stage for us. If you remember, um, Jesus, number one, we know that his his true father is God. Mary conceived by way of the Holy Spirit, but Mary was also married. Uh, her husband' name is Joseph, and Joseph is Jesus's stepfather. And so we saw him early on in Jesus's life. But once we saw Jesus enter into adulthood, um, somewhere Joseph disappeared. Now, scripture does not tell us what happened to Joseph. Many believe that Joseph passed away. Joseph um, could, have, could have left for any reason. He could have abandoned them. He could have found him another woman. I have no idea, and nor am I trying to speculate. But the point that I want you to know is that he left. Joseph is gone. 
I don't know if you have ever experienced losing a father. There are some of you who have lost fathers um, uh, through, through death. There are some of you who have lost your father due to abandonment. And whether it be through death or abandonment, neither are easy to deal with. And Jesus had to deal with the grief of losing his earthly father. Can you see that? The way that we know this is because um, there's a level of responsibility that comes onto the eldest son, who's Jesus. He's the oldest son. When the father passes or the father leaves for whatever reason, the eldest son uh, takes on responsibility. He becomes the male of the house. And when that happens, what we find is that now he's responsible for his mother. Now, all this wow from the time that Joseph left the story all the way up until this point, now at the cross and he's getting ready to uh, transition, he's getting ready to yield up his spirit, we find that while nailed to the cross, while exhausted, while thirsty, while bleeding, that Jesus continues to lead. And he looks at his mother and he says, he says, woman, behold your son. And he says, this is now your mother. What I want you to know is that Jesus continued to leave, to lead rather, through his grief. I bring this up to this morning because I want to encourage somebody who's here with me. Um, I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what you've been challenged with, but I know that it wasn't easy. But the truth is that you've got responsibility, that despite everything that's happened, life is continuing around you. There's a mother who still has children. There's a father who has a family. Uh, there's, someone, uh, there's someone who still has a, has a work to do. You still got a business to run. You've got a house to maintain. You've got things. You've got you've got an area that you must lead. And, and I, I know that you are grieving, but I got to show you that Jesus, while he was grieving, he continued to lead. And if he did it, so can you. I'm not telling you to do this in your own strength. But what I am letting you know is that there's a there's a throne of grace that you can go to boldly, not in shame, not because you're discouraged, not because uh, because you are uh, because you are um, worthless, but because he knows exactly what you're going through. And he did it and he can strengthen you through it. I want to pray with you this morning because in Christ, we see that we, too can lead while we grieve. I believe there's hope that's rising in this moment. I believe there's strength that's coming into your heart right now. You're gonna make it through this and you're gonna lead through it. There are people depending on you. There's a destiny awaiting you. I appreciate the fact that despite grieving the loss of a father, Jesus continued to fulfill both his destiny and his responsibility. And like him, you have both. There's destiny on your life. There's responsibility that you have. And you're going to fulfill both by the grace of God. Father, we thank you this morning. And we are so grateful for your grace. I can hear the songwriter saying, your grace and mercy, it brought me through. Father, we're calling on that grace today. The grace that's found in Jesus Christ. Lord, my brother and my sister, that student, they've navigated through a season that shook them like none other. Lord, while we acknowledge what they're going through, 
life is continuing around them. There are still children depending on that father. There's still a business that's that's that uh, employees that are depending on that business owner. And father, in their own strength, they cannot make it. But Lord, you have shown us in your word that there's strength available through Jesus. He told Paul, he said, my grace is sufficient. In other words, my grace is enough. Lord, if it was enough for Paul, it's enough for my sister. It's enough for my brother. It's enough for that student. It's enough for that, for that elder. It's enough for them right now, for that widow. It's enough for that son, for that daughter. Lord, meet us today with your grace. We know that it's not physical, but God, it's spiritual. Their soul needs strength today. Their spirit man needs strength today. And Father, I thank you that it's available and you give it liberally. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. My name is Enrique Brooks. I'm honored to be the senior pastor of Thrive Church and host of the Prayer 365 podcast. So we're on a mission to transform lives through the lifestyle of prayer. I want to encourage you that if there's somebody you know who could benefit from this message today, go share it with them. Because there's somebody who's leading while grieving, but they're doing so without grace. And you ought to share the good news that there's grace for you that'll bring you through. God bless you. Take care.